Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about how does it happen that during the mass hysteria of 2020, the view upon masks changed so considerably, seemingly overnight. How did it go from totally scientifically something that should be an option, as Fauci had said, to it should totally be mandated everywhere, and if you don't wear one, uh, you're practically an evil person, or in, in fact, an evil person and a killer. How do these kinds of changes happen? Now, um, let's before we go into the asking how cultures and why it happens in culture, let's talk about briefly why they happen in your own brain. Much of what we do and our motivations and what we do, we think that we have good reasons for it, but in fact, usually we're making up those reasons after the fact. So our brains have evolved with you know just hundreds and hundreds of millions of instincts that we're packed with that are really smart when they all work together in our natural environment. The ability for us to explicitly have access to all that is almost zero. So when we're asked, asking ourselves, hey, why did we do that? We often at best are, can make some kind of explanation that's maybe pointing in the right direction in terms of what our brain is really doing, but at best it's just pointing in the right direction and usually we're just making it up. We have no real idea and we're flat out wrong. So I've mentioned this kind of experiment before. I show you uh, pairs of faces and I ask you who's more attractive and you say, okay, this one's more attractive. Okay, here's two more. Okay, this one. And we do this for a lot of different pairs of faces and then I come back and I said, you remember these pairs of faces? I'm going to show you them again. You remember I showed you these two and you said this one was more attractive. Well, I want you to now write down some justifications for why this one is more attractive than this one. And you forgot at that point that earlier you had said this one, and you actually write justifications for this one. Right? People don't have access to their real justifications for why they do what they do. Very often they just make it up after the fact. They try to create a narrative that somehow fits together that can explain the actions, which are not irrational in the case of humans, but they're inaccessible to us. So we try to create a rational story that we can follow that sort of says, okay, that's why I did that. And that's, trying to create a narrative for ourselves that sort of makes us explicable. Similar sorts of things happen in cultural communities. When a community does what it does over time, it's a lot like a Ouija board, like with a million fingers pushing on it. It's just moving semi-randomly, just style, just coming up with its own stuff that it does. It need not be by virtue of any rational, you know, deliberative action. But after, wherever it ends up, the members of the community individually like okay why did we do this but they try to make up reasons and the p folks who are better at making up reasons for why the community is doing what it's doing well they get rewarded because yeah that seems to fit the facts that's he, he's he's so smart and then she comes up with better actually oh she, she, that that's even better that fits what we've been doing and why our cultural community is doing these sorts of things that it's doing a narrative happens and it creates a whole story justifying why we are the way we are it's just at the cultural group level rather than at the individual level now these things happen all over the place. They don't just happen in sort of, uh, sort of these sort of totalitarian forces like we've seen over the last year. They happen in really simple things like fashion and accents and stylistic differences between communities. It's not merely the case that um, you know there's different communities of fashion in, in my town. Some of the of, of some of the communities will dress up every time they go out. They dress up. They do their nails. They're wearing high heels. They're nice dresses. They're colorful dresses. They're just they're great. They look. They just go out there looking great. But there's another community uh, amongst you know dozens and dozens of communities. Well, they just barely put on anything. They're but they're, they're Lululemon. They're really expensive. But they want to look like they're barely trying. Right. That's another kind of, of attitude. And each side will look at the other, and they'll use words to describe the other as disgusting, low. Oh, that group. They just wear these sleazy clothes. Right. So sleazy and trashy. And that group, they're so frumpy, they're not even trying. So they will look upon them with disgust, even though how they ended up with those styles was somewhat random. And not completely random, because in fact, as if they were initially imagined they were one community, but then so let's suppose some, some, some part of it started to wear a little bit more uh, uh, fancy clothes when they went out, and the other part was a little bit less, and it turned out that that, that signaled a, a, a real difference between these communities, and that can be amplified and exaggerated over time because it signals membership in these two different sub-communities. So over time, it can push stylistically apart and creating even bigger differences between those styles. So that's why those styles can happen, but, it cr but when that happens, the communities say, yeah, what they're doing is trashy, and they come up with justifications. 
Well, there's no reason to dress up like that. You're not going to a ball when you go out. Why are they dressing like that? It's just, it's like looking like a whore and the whole society is going to fall apart. You can imagine there's a three or four more paragraphs in that and therefore society will fall apart. You're, you've heard these sorts of stories all the time. And the other side is how dare they just going out? They don't care about their sexuality and even looking good for their husbands or blah, 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 right? And society is all going downhill because of that. The signals, the virtue signals don't just signal that the people in the community are virtuous. The signals themselves are virtuous. They're inherently, intrinsically virtuous themselves. They're glowing in virtue. Right? That's what happens. And this happens post hoc. Obviously, there's nothing good about Lululemon barely dressing up kind of behavior, but they'll come up with justifications for why. Well, why should I? You know, I want to be comfortable. It's actually actually healthier for your legs. Your legs can breathe more when you've got this kind of stuff because you know, they'll come up with all of these stories that justify it. And there's magazines that talk about why it's good to wear that and not that. They are filled with narratives that justify why you should wear that kind of thing and why they're good and why the others are bad. That's what happens within communities. You just have random walks potentially pushed away from each other, creating these virtue signals, and then the communities post hoc create justifications for why they're good. That's what happens everywhere. Happens for accents as well. You can imagine George Will writing papers in the Atlantic or wherever he was writing papers, how you, the use of ain't and where you at is just destroying the English language and soon our children are not even going to be able to speak and blah, 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 so bad. Right. These are the kinds of things that affect all the stylistic differences that signal differences within sub-communities get imbued with goodness or badness for the alternative signals. And the same thing happened with masks last year. In the beginning, masks weren't really an issue. No one really talked about it. It was all about lockdowns and the issues about lockdowns in March and April of 2020. But Though they were obviously beginning to be two communities, which in the United States had a lot of polarization, left-right polarization, but initially wasn't. And of course, as I've talked about other uh, science moment videos, it has nothing to do with left-right, but it ended up with a strong polarization from left-right. And those who were more COVID cultish and thinking that COVID is a disproportionately dangerous thing and we should do everything that we possibly can, no matter how draconian, well, they were more likely to put on masks or at least be, have positive support for masks even before they were mandated. mandated. And those who were against... Um, thinking that it was a disproportionately dangerous altogether novel virus, we're saying, look, there's no real reason to wear masks. They were definitely much less likely to wear masks. Well, that stylistic difference would then have been amplified and exaggerated because it signaled membership in these two different communities. And so that pushed it. More and more people wore masks and supported masks within one group, and more, more and more people really didn't do anything because they never were, were wearing, wearing masks. But the masks then became a signal and signaled virtuous people but it's never just that the signal shows that the people are virtuous. The, the signal itself gets imbued with virtue. And it's done by virtue of a narrative, a post hoc narrative after the fact, that creates a story for why the signal that we're using to signal our virtue is itself virtuous. Itself, it glows with goodness. And so suddenly, overnight, the science completely changed. That's how the science completely changed. It's part of a post hoc creating facts after the fact for why it is that we have the virtual sig virtue signal that we have. These things pervade, and same thing for vaccines, same thing, they're all over the place in our life. Once you start seeing these in the case of accent and other you know, stylistic differences and fashion differences and masks and vaccinations, and you see them everywhere. They pervade everything in terms of the different kinds of communities. Once you see them, hopefully you're more immune to them and don't let yourself be pulled in by them. So you can just sit back and say, no, really, is this virtue signal actually good? Or is it just a stylistic difference that happens to signal membership? Of a, you know, hey, I don't even want to be a member of this group or that group. I want to be myself, an independent thinker that's not susceptible to any of this stuff. And that was your science moment.